Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. So yesterday we I think we were discussing on how to get the NPV, and I guess the last thing we discussed was how to get NPV in case you had to use um, the Excel, which I think is a very easy process, by the way. Okay. Uh, and so today I want us to discuss how to get the internal rate of return as an appraisal method. Okay, how to get the IRR as an appraisal method. So first of all, the IRR, it's simply the, discount, the internal rate of return. Okay, as the name is suggesting, it's a rate of return. Okay, it's a rate of return. And it is a return that you'll be getting from the investment that yields a zero NPV. Okay, if the investment you have at hand, okay, was to have a zero NPV, what rate of return is it going to be given to the company? Okay, which implies that for IRR should be the minimum return that the project must yield. So in case the yield is lower than the IRR, then that can be for a non-investable project. Okay, so the IRR, the internal rate of return, okay, as uh, just mentioned. It is a return that you'll be getting in percentage, is a percent yields, okay, uh, from the investment that make sure that the NPV of the, the NPV of the investment is equal to zero. Okay. So in case we do receive, therefore, uh, the return from the project is equal to the IRR, the internal rate of return, then we have the NPV of the investment equal to zero. Okay. We have the NPV of the investment equal to zero. Okay. Which imply therefore if the return you're receiving okay, is lower than the IRR. Okay? If the actual return is lower than the IRR, then it has to be the full grade of the negative NPV. This, therefore, therefore, this is a non-investable project. Okay? So in case the return to receive is going to be greater than IRR, of course, that definitely that's what you want as a business, because that means therefore you can end up with what we call a positive NPV. So therefore, when it comes to determining should we invest or not invest, okay, we make a comparison with what we call the cost of capital. We compare uh, what is the cost of capital, okay? Uh, in the worst case scenario, okay, in the worst case scenario, uh, that is, if a project was to give us a zero NPV, what return do we get? We get, for example, twelve percent. Then we observe who, who whoever finances us, whoever gives us their finance, what return do they want? If the return they want is thirteen percent and the IRR is ten percent, then should we invest? No, we reject, okay? Because the return we see, the minimum return we receive for the investment, okay, IRL, if it's going to be lower than the cost of capital, then we should not invest. It makes no sense for us to make that investment because the return, the minimum return received from the investment is therefore not equal to uh, the cost of capital because the capital providers are the wanting 13%. What the IRL is equal to 10%. So there the could be chances that our cost, our end, there could be chances that uh, we might end up having a case where the return received from the investment are lower than the cost. Okay, then therefore, as a company, therefore, we ought not to invest in such a project. Okay, if, however, the IRR okay is equal to let's say fifteen percent, and the cost of capital is equal to thirteen percent, now twelve percent. Okay, so we're comparing fifteen versus twelve. Twelve being the cost of capital, fifteen being the return. Okay. So if the IRR, the return we are receiving on the mean to that give us an MPV equal to zero is 15% and the cost of capital is equal to 12%, then, that, then that is a good investment. Why? Because the IRR is equal to 15%, uh, okay? The mean, bare minimum return we can receive for the investment is 15%. The cost of capital, the return we must give to the capital providers is equal to 12%. So we're getting more return, okay, on the bare minimum uh, than the cost of capital. That's something good for the business, okay? So generally, how therefore do we quantify? How therefore do we determine the IRR? Okay. So first of all, we, it is possible we, we can quantify the IRR uh, to be equal to the discount rate. Okay, as you just mentioned, at the return, which is equal to the discount rate, that will be will make sure the NPV of the investment is zero. Okay. That in case we discount the cash flows, in case we discount the cash flows of this investment, in case we discount the cash flows of this investment at the IRR, at the IRR. Then we're going to end up getting an NPV equal to zero. Okay. So what do you do? We therefore can use, for example, we can use a trial and error method. Okay. We determine at what rate do we discount these cash flows? Okay. From the investment. If you remember the way we did uh, the table we did yesterday, let me just go back to that table. Yeah, like this table. Okay. Don't forget these cash flows that we had here. 
okay, this cash flow we have here, year of zero, okay, all the way to the final year, we discount the given rate, okay. So what if we discount, okay, uh, if we discount the cash flows of this project, okay, and let's say 10%, and that's again give us an MPV equal to zero, then we see the 10% therefore become the form the IRR. Okay, as you mentioned, at IRR, the cost of capital, the, the NPV is equal to zero. Okay. So if for example this was, was already a positive, okay. If for example at 10%, we got a positive NPV of let's say uh let's say a thousand, positive NPV of a thousand, which means therefore we need to determine what what rate therefore should we discount the same same cash flows at what rate that is going to give us zero NPV. Therefore, should we increase the discount rate or decrease the discount rate? Let me repeat. At 10%, this cash flows gave us a positive NPV of 1,000. As we want to determine what discount rate should we use that is going to give us an NPV equal to zero. Now the question is, the discount rate we'll be using here, should it be lower than 10% or higher than 10%? Brian. Right. Sorry, my network is, is uh, could you repeat the question, please? The question is, okay, at 10%, we've got a positive NPV of 1,000. We want to get an NPV equal to zero. We need to decrease the NPV from 1,000 to zero. So should I increase my discount rate here or reduce it? Increase. Increase it, yes. Okay, you need to increase it. You want to reduce the present value. Okay, in case you use a lower discount rate, you're increasing the present value. But this time around, we want to increase the price. We need to decrease the present value. So therefore, you discount at a higher discount rate. Okay, you use therefore a higher discount rate. Okay, so for example, if for example, we use at 15%, it's just an example. If we use at 15%, assume that we get, for example, we get um, an NPV of, let's say, um, negative 500. Okay, so therefore, we are beyond the zero, okay, because it was from a thousand, okay, all this negative value, which implies therefore we can say that in theory, we can say that the NPV of this investment is between 10 and 15, because of the, the, the IRR is between 10% and 15%, because at 10%, percent we got a thousand, at 15%, we went beyond zero. That implies therefore the IRR for this investment is between uh, 10 and 15%, okay? Therefore, let's just use this, let's just use this example to get the IRR, what would be the IRR, okay? Okay, <clears throat> so if you use this simple example you've just done here, okay, then you can see that the IRR, yes, I could I get my rating area. Okay, so you have to use that, see that simple example you've just done there. Okay, that's at ten percent. Okay, that's at ten percent. We got an NPV equal to positive one thousand. Mm -hmm. My pen is back. <clears throat> we got a thousand. Okay, and at fifteen percent, we got an NPV equal to negative. Okay, five hundred. I've mentioned that at IRR and IRR, the internal return, we ought to get an MPV equal to zero. Record here and sort my pen out. Okay, at ARA, we see that the MPV is, is equal to zero, okay? And which imply therefore, okay, the IRR is between 10 and 15, because uh, if you have to do this simple timeline here, okay, a graphic, not a timeline, let's see, 10% uh, uh, got 1,000, 
okay we want to get us at IRR the NPV is equal to uh, zero so this NPV this is a discount rate and you see that at 15 percent we got an NPV equal to negative 500 don't forget zero uh, is between uh, uh, positive 1000 okay and negative zero that's with a full zero in between okay which imply therefore uh, we can now be able to estimate what should be the IRR okay because uh, no at 10 percent is a thousand at 15 percent is negative 500 which imply therefore we can say the, the distance in quotes okay between these two points okay in terms of percentage is equal to five percent because it's 15 minus 10 five percent in terms of the npv the distance in quotes between these two points okay is equal to how much nafisa nafisa how much is that, that distance in quote Hmm? How much in a face? Uh? Are you in class or <clears throat> let me share this issue? Sakina. Fifteen hundred? Fifteen hundred, yes, of course. This is fifteen hundred. Look, this is equal to fifteen hundred. Okay. In terms of dollars, that is MPV, this distance in quotes is equal to fifteen hundred. Okay. Within by the form, we can see that five percent is equal to fifteen hundred, isn't it? Because it's the same distance, only that we are looking from a different angle. One is the rate, the other one is about the uh, the price, the value. Okay. The five percent therefore is equal to fifteen hundred dollars. What imply the form? One dollar, okay, which imply the form. One dollar is equal to five percent divided by fifteen hundred. Is it? We just divided, okay? We can that for one dollar for is equivalent to five percent divided by fifteen hundred. We want to the, we want to decrease our NPV from a thousand, okay, to zero. Therefore, we decrease by one thousand points, one thousand dollar. We can apply therefore the percentage therefore will be equal to this distance therefore will also be equal to. Uh, we know that one dollar is equal to uh for five percent divided by 500 what about a thousand dollar we simply multiply by a thousand it will be five percent divided by 1500 times a thousand okay to give us how much three point Three point three. Okay, three point three three percent. Okay, carrying for uh, what will be the uh, the uh, the R. So here the distance because this is equal to three point three percent. Therefore, the IRR is ten percent plus three point three percent. Give therefore thirteen point three percent. The kind of the IRR here. Okay, that would mean therefore if you discount the cash flows of this investment at that 10.3%, then you get end up getting an NPV equal to zero. Okay, if we discount the same cash flows of this of the project at a rate of 13.3%, then we get therefore an NPV equal to zero. But the return from the investment, if it is at 13.3 at 13.3%, then you get end up with a case of having a zero NPV. Okay. <clears throat> now, how do you get that 13%? 13% was equal to we have 10 plus the 5% here we have done 1500 times a thousand okay. which has given us 13.3% okay, that's, that's, that's what we just done 10% okay which you have here okay plus 3.3% okay and 3.3% and is we have it here they have 10 plus 5% divide 1500 times a thousand okay which you obtain from here and that's kind of for the IRR okay we imply therefore, you said the IRR therefore is equal to what is 10%? 10% here is the lower discount rate. Okay, therefore, you can say 10 is let me call it A plus 15% was 5% uh, here is equal to the 15%. Okay, let me actually just use as the R. Therefore, 10% plus 15% minus 10%, which give us 5% times a thousand divide by. 1500 was obtained as a thousand minus minus 500 if you still remember okay to give the four 13.3 percent
percent. What is A? What is ten percent? Let's hold. Let's degrade to ten percent as the lower discount rate. To get, let's call it A. Therefore, A. Then fifteen percent be in the higher discount rate. Let's call it B. Maybe for two B minus A. Okay, a thousand was the NPV as the lower discount rate. Here we have it. This was a thousand at ten percent. A thousand. Therefore, call it NPV at A. NPV. A divided by NPV A minus negative 500 was NPV at the highest discount rate. NPV B. And it's called therefore the internal rate of return formula. Okay. Yeah. Simple as that. That's what therefore we get the four. We estimate the IRR. Through the use of trial and error method. Okay. Any question? Nafisa, I hope you know your internet is okay. Nafisa, it's clear. Yes, clear. Sir, okay. so this formula is same. Okay, but okay, never mind. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sakina, it's clear. Yeah, yes. Okay. Okay, let's do an example. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we there's a question that we did yesterday. Like, um, the big UK company, isn't it? Mm, let's first do a simple one before you do big UK. Let's do a simple one here. Mm. That's a simple example here. Yes, here it is. What do you think is the IRR here? This is the simplest question ever. Yeah, so this question, what's the IRR here? What do you get? This is a very easy question. Sixteen percent. Oh, for 16 percent. Okay, get 16 percent. Okay, so you see that at IRR, the NPV is equal to zero. Okay, in this project, we only have one cash flow, single cash flow. Okay, received in year one. Therefore, we say, therefore, the present order cash flow is 1.16 million. We just come back to year zero. Okay, one plus R, the power of one is equal to. Uh, don't forget, if the NPV is equal to zero, then the initial cost of investment, the initial investment cost is equal to the in the uh, the end, the initial investment cost is equal to the present value of cash flow, okay, which is equal to one million. 
20. Let me just repeat what I've just said. Uh, if NPV is equal to zero, don't forget to say this is giving us the present value of cash flow. Okay, minus initial cost, IO is equal to zero. So we can bring this become positive. Therefore, uh, the present value of cash flow is equal to the initial investment cost. Okay, to give us one million. Therefore, R therefore equal to 1.16 million divided by one million minus one. And of course, we do have a percent. Guess to give us 16%. Okay. This is really the one. Okay, we get 60 percent effort to be the internal rate of return. <clears throat> out of this, out of this, if we have to use a trial and error method, go through it, then read it together. Okay, supposing that you've gone through it. So in this example, we want to get what will be the IRR okay, uh, for this investment. And of course, we can make, we can advise the company as to whether the company should invest or not invest in the project, okay? So the cash flow says for 120, 150, 100, and 165, initial capital is equal to uh, 100, 400 million, okay? Uh, so you want to compute what ought to be the IRR. Okay, let's do it together. Hmm. Could you see the question? I'm, I'm wondering whether because did you see that question on X Y Z? Yeah, we saw it. Oh, okay, 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 great. <clears throat> 
I was wondering whether I did share my screen. Okay, so we have the company XYZ, uh, this project XYZ. Uh, so we need to get what is the NPV. Okay, let's get the NPV and its cost of capital. Okay, the NPV will be equal to. We first get the present value of cash flows. And use black pen. Okay, so therefore, the NPV of this investment uh, will be equal to the present value of cash flow. So we have cash flows here. So year one is 120 million. Uh, year two is 150 million. Year three is 100 million. And year four is 165. So we discount back to year zero. Okay, present value interest factor. We discount at the company cost of capital, which is 10%. Okay, 0 0.909, 0 0.82. I think six, I'm not sure, 0 0.751, 0 0.683. I'm not sure about those factors, by the way. Check on the tables. Okay, so year one, year two, year three, year four. We get a present value. We get the NPV. It will be the sum of present value. You have obtained above, present value of cash flows, minus the initial cost. Initial cost. Okay, this will be equal to the sum you get here, minus. 400 million. Who's NPV? Check on the factors. I'm not sure about them. Sir? Yes? I have a question. Yes? Uh, why aren't we using the formula? Uh, because for, you need to get first, don't forget the formula. We can use it as this formula. So this formula can use it. However, we do need the NPV see, NPV here. Is it? We can't work with it. But the, and the NPV is 120, 150, 100. No. no. This is cash flow. This 120, 150, these are cash flows. Aren't they? Oh. Let me, let me just go back. Maybe I hope, I hope I did. Yes, here it is. These are cash flows. These are cash flows we'll be getting from the investment. In year one, you get 120, year two, you get 150, year three, you get 100, year four, you get 165. These are cash flows, not NPVs. Okay, and how will we look for the discount factor, like in that formula? So first, we need to get the discount. We need first to get the, what is the, is the NPV at 10%. That's what we want to first get. So once we get the NPV at 10%, then we term it, okay? We use a trial, okay? It's trial and error method, okay? We use it. If, for example, you're going to get an NPV here, let me just go back to the analysis here. If, for instance, we get an NPV equal to be maybe equal to an NPV value of, let's say, uh, 30 million, okay, then you can determine. So, so I get 21. Oh, you get 21, okay, already. So 21. So, in case, for example, okay, as for what? Yeah. Uh, so, you're telling us we get 21 million positive, 21 million. Yeah, yeah, positive. Positive, positive. okay. Therefore, we get here a positive 21 million. The IRR, okay, will give ought to have given us if the ten percent here was IRR, then we ought to have got an NPV equal to zero. But we haven't gotten a zero here, so therefore we can do the first second trial. Okay, in this example, let's example, uh, let's use. Uh, do you have do you have ten percent in your tables? Twelve percent in your tables. Or that team? Do you have thirteen percent in your table? I suppose you have using tables. Uh, they. There's 12 and 13 both. Oh, that's yeah. Okay, let's do that 10%. Okay, it's a trial I want to use. It's a trial and error method. So let's, for example, pick 13%. Okay. Uh, so here we can say that 10% was our A here in the formula above there. Now, our second trial, 13% become therefore our B. Uh, and how Bonafisa, you're, you're getting it? Yes, I'm getting it. Okay, great. Okay, so we do the same process, but now we add that ten percent, the higher discount rate, that ten percent. Okay, same process, but now that ten percent. So at that ten percent, then PV will be equal to okay, the same process, cash flow. Yeah, year one, year two, year three, year four, uh, one twenty, one fifty, one hundred, one sixty-five. Okay, we discount at that ten percent. Okay, the present value in one, year two, year three, year four, you get NPV, same process, sum of present value, you get obtain above. Minus okay, initial after the NPV, after we get the NPV, that's when we substitute it in the formula. Yeah, yes, once we have the NPVs now. 
Oh yeah, but in this question we only had ten percent. Yes, but now this is, now we have taken that ten percent. As I was. Oh, we just take it. Like, yes. Take that ten percent. Someone else can take twelve percent. Someone else fourteen percent. Yeah, you can take it at any rate that you prefer. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's just and an, it's a trial. Okay, it's trial and error method. So you can take that ten. Someone else can take eleven. Someone else fifteen. It's a trial and error method. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Okay. So in case we were to discount that ten percent, what would be the NPV? Minus ninety-seven. You get how much? I'm getting negative ninety-seven. Negative ninety-seven million. So we suppose that the, this the NPV is okay. Is this is was this a ten percent twenty-one was okay? Was is was it correct? Yeah, I got twenty-one point five. Uh, twenty-one point five. Yes. Okay, twenty-one. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Let's assume that they are correct. Okay, someone confirm that ten percent is okay. Because in case we get the NPV wrong, then we ended up with a wrong IRR. Confirm this, and this one is okay. Call it confirmed. So confirm this. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, so it's it's minus six. It's minus six. I did the last one wrong. So minus six. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, minus six. Yeah, minus six million. Okay, great. So since now we have the two discount rate, okay, we have can call that we can therefore call ten percent to be our A, thirty percent to be our B. Therefore, you have to use the formula. Okay, give me a second. I need power. So since therefore we have the two discount rate, uh, 10 and 13, we can therefore call a, uh, 10 to be A, 13 to be B. Therefore, IRR, therefore, will be equal to A, 10%, B, 13%, minus A, 10%. The value at 10%, our discount rate, is equal to, we got 21 million, divided by 21 million, minus, minus uh, 6 million. And we get how much therefore to be IRR. 12 point.
Twelve point six to five percent. Twelve point six to five percent. Six three. Six yeah. Okay, they forget twelve point six three percent to be counted for the uh, uh, IRR. Look, this is an estimation method. Is you are just approximating. But generally, if you discount the same cash flows, uh, 12.63 percent, then you want to get to an NPV that is very close to a zero. Okay, but of course, it won't will be exactly zero because this is simply an estimation method you're using the IRR formula. Clear? Okay. Now, the yesterday we did big UK. I think you still remember that example we did, uh, and we got an NPV. So I want us to use that example. Uh, we see where they can get the NPV. Uh, so give me a second as I get the question. Big UK, where is it? Big UK, can you see it? Sir? Yes. Yeah, I think the answer is 12.33%. 12.33? What happened? Yeah. Someone confirm that answer 12.33 or 12.63? 12.33. 12 12.33, not 63. Okay. Okay, 12.33%. 12 12 Should we invest in this project, by the way? Yes. Yes, the company should invest in this project since it yields a positive NPV. Okay, the company. Should invest in the project. In the project since. Error. 12.33% is greater than cost of capital is greater. Than the cost of capital. Ten percent. Okay, therefore it is financially acceptable. Okay, uh, of course, if it if the IR was let's say eight percent and cost it was ten percent, then of course you reject. Okay, but not just reject. Why? Okay, I think I told you that you need to answer since why is it the case that you won't reject or accept? Okay, you must include that in your analysis. So anyway, going back to the big UK company, the one we did yesterday. Uh, I'm not sure the examiner asked us to get the, uh, the MPV, uh, the IRL. I think the examiner actually asked us to do that. Mm -hmm. Let me see again the question back. Mm -hmm. Yes, question back here. I think part B, the examiner was asked us to get the IRL. And anyway, let's see. It was BQK. B Q K. Yes, this was a question that we did yesterday on B Q K. Mm -hmm. Not sure the exam. Any? Anyway. Okay, the exam was not was not asking us to get the IRR, but I see that part B. You've been asked uh, to get the IRR, and of course we uh, advise the company as whether they should accept or not accept the project. Okay. So let's do that question. We assume that that was asked for us, okay, the IRR. So let's go back to the Excel. Mm -hmm. This was a question that we did yesterday. So these are the cash flows. So we did attend, what was the discount rate? 12%, okay. So 12%, okay, we got an NPV of uh, 274. So step one is done already, okay, getting the NPV of the project uh, at the company cost of capital. So we already have that part already, okay. Uh, we got 274 positive. Now, let me copy this cash flows. We'd get the NPV, okay. Control copy. Okay. So, mm -hmm. huh? what's happened? The different rates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Paste values. 
Yes, okay. Therefore, we want to get now MPV. Let me call this MPV. Uh, we use a trial. MPV at let's say 15 or 16. Let's 16 percent. NPV, 16 percent. Uh, B equal to NPV. And just call it NPV. B equal to NPV. You still remember how to get NPV. Uh, now you want to use 16 percent, 0 0.16. Okay. Uh, we define the cash flows from year one, year one, year two, year three, year four. Okay. Uh, plus or simply or minus the initial cost, which is four million, four million, and that gives for the NPV. So we get negative six to one, two six to uh, two six to uh, two six to one. Okay, that is in case we discount the same cash flows, but now at sixteen percent. Okay, the same process you have done here. I only think that this is an Excel, so it can it can give you the NPV. So use its power. You utilize the power of Excel. Therefore, I add the formula is equal to okay. Now, the lower discount trade was 12%, 12%, plus, sorry, 12%, and the initial cost was 16, minus 12% is 4%, 16 minus 4, okay, uh, we multiply by the NPV at 12% was 274, 274, divide by uh, 274, minus, minus, the NPV at 12%. Is that clear? A plus B minus A multiplied by NPV at A divided by NPV at A minus NPV at B. And we therefore get the foot to be our IRR. Let me do it in percentage and get 50. Get 15.27 percent. We have the, the IRR of this investment. Is that clear? Brian is clear. Just uh, highlight the formula again, please. That formula. Yeah. Okay. There it is. A 12 percent. B 60 percent. So 12% A uh, plus B minus A, 16 minus A, multiplied by NPV at A, which was, uh, we got one, I think one, uh, we can remember, 274 something. Then we divide by NPV at B, okay, minus NPV at B. Oh, okay, okay. It's clear. The second NPV, we just use the formula again, yeah? Yeah, for the second MPV, I just use the formula, the one we had yesterday. Yeah, so I just use the formula again. Okay, that's it. And again, therefore, 12.27% to be the IRR. Uh, what if you forget the, the what if you forget the IRR formula or you forget the IRR formula? Because you can, okay. Okay, what you can do is that since this as I mentioned, this is this is Excel, so it should be able to, uh, to assist you in getting IRR. So simply, you just say IRR, and you have it here. So IRR, okay. So here you can therefore the, the Excel can help you out in uh, getting the internal top return without the need for you to remember step one. I get I do this. No, all you just need is cash flows. What are the cash flows? The cash flows are here, okay. So for this case, we define the cash flows from year zero, okay. We define the cash flow from year zero. For the NPV, we are defining from year one. Obviously, remember that, that difference. So for the IRR, you define from your zero. So I define from your zero all the way to the final year. And that's my IRR, 15%. Is it clear? Okay, you can see this was a trial. And of course, you can see this is different. Now, this is the actual IRR because this is Excel giving us, okay? This is the exact IRR. This was a for, uh, an estimation. You can see, therefore, they are slightly different. Here, let me define the formula again, okay, to assist you to get it, okay. IRR, okay, you define the cash flow from year zero. So year zero there, year two, going that way. You define the cash flow from year zero. And to give you the IRR. So it makes your work much more easier, just in case you forget the formula, because you can forget this formula, the IRR formula, A plus B minus A, you can forget it. Just in case, you can also use the formula embedded on the Excel. Here. Yeah. 
question. Sanya, it's clear. Yes, sir. This is clear. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So that's simple to get that out, okay? And now you can give the address to the company whether it should accept or get it. Okay, but based on the IRR, the company should accept the project uh, since the IRR, 12.23%, is greater than cost of capital, 12 Okay. And that's what we are meant to have done in the particular question. Okay, that's what we are meant to have done. Now, okay, now let's do a question that asks us, the examiner asks us to get the IRR. NPV, if possible, NPV and IRR together. Let's go through the question bank. Question bank, where is this? Okay, let's do a question, which we are meant to do both of them, IRR and NPV. We present through Excel, because that's what you'll do in reality in the exam. Okay, let's do from page one. Actually, and I'm not sure that. Have we done this this dual company? I think you've done it. I'm not sure. Have we done this dual company? Uh, yeah, I think we have. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you remember the cash flows? Do you remember the cash flows? If you've done it, I think you should be having the cash flows. You have the cash flow from uh, your. Let me just check. Mm, check. I have the cash flow. Ah, okay, great. Okay. So part A, we are meant to get the NPB, which we did. Okay. Now part B, the exam asking you, calculate the IRR for of buying the new machine and advise on accessibility of the proposed purchase. Okay, so you want to determine therefore what's the IRR and you're meant to advise the company as whether they should invest in the project or not. Okay. So use Excel. Okay. So we have to use Excel to do that. Okay, so you do have the cash flows here. So what are the cash flows? Yeah, what year zero? Um, two hundred. Yeah, zero two hundred. Year zero. Okay, two hundred. No. Yes. Two hundred is for year one. Yeah, two hundred is for year one. Yeah. Okay. Year zero. The total initial investment. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Okay. So negative. You begin with the negative. Okay, negative eight hundred. This is HP. Okay. Year one. Year one is 200. Positive 200. Year two. 290. 290. Yeah. 290. Year three. 338. 338. Sorry, 338. 380. Three. Sorry, sorry, it's 338. 338. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Year four. 310. 310. Yeah. Okay, so see, those are the cash flows, and now we want to get IRR. Okay, what do you do? You can use a formula if you prefer, but I would not propose, I would not prefer you to do that. You waste out of time. Since it's Excel, IRR, the simple is equal to IRR. Okay, we define the cash flow from year zero. Okay, take note of that. Okay, for the MPV, you define the cash flow from year one, for the IRR, from year zero, and year zero must be a negative. Okay, because it's a cash outflow you're paying. Okay, therefore. I define from year zero all the way to year four. There was no year five? There is negative 16. Yeah, you have to include it, year five. Year five, how much negative 16? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Therefore, I am, therefore B equal to, you begin from year zero, you define all the cash flows, all of them. Okay. I am from year zero all the way to the last year, in this case, Year six. Don't forget for the IRR, you begin from year zero. And of course, definitely year zero, it has to be cash out for it has to be a negative. Otherwise, in case they are positive, you can't get IRR. And therefore, the IRR, which is 14%, which is about 14.1%. Clear. Okay. Great, so that's all. Mm. 
the windows are mark if you use Excel. Like you, the way you, you get the full marks. You get the full marks. Yes, you do. Oh, OK. Yeah, some, someone is going to use a formula. If the marks are four marks, they get four marks. Someone is going to use the, uh, the IRR, the uh, formula uh, in Excel, you get four marks. In the same thing, you get full marks of all the marks. So in case you know the formula, that makes your works much more easier, okay? But it doesn't mean that in case you don't use the formula, you get this in a penalty. You don't get a penalty, okay? Uh, uh, in case you to use the formula A plus B, no, you get the full marks. If they're full marks, they're full marks. Okay, as I, I think I told you, as I mentioned, but as much as possible in section C, okay, avoid using the calculator. Okay, you can use it, not that you should not use it. You can use it, but any pre work you do, ensure it appears on the Excel. What the exam is going to refer to this cell, okay? Uh, refer, what have you done here? Okay, so it's going to refer to the formula, okay? For example, refer to the formula. What have you done? Have you done the correct thing? Okay, because in case, for example, you just put, uh, let's say 14 point, you do the work on calculator, you put 14.1%, okay? Uh, as your IRR, no problem. That's the IRR. However, can the examiner tell where you got this 14.1 percent is? You can't. You can't. So you get you get penalized for that. Okay. But in case you're sure that this is how I got my 14.1 percent, you get the full marks. Uh, if someone else was to use uh, the formula A plus B, okay, A plus B minus, you get all. They also get the full marks. Okay. But if someone who is not going to show the workings, you get zero. Like in this case, I, am, I think you're going to get a zero. In case you don't show the workings. In this example, you get the full marks because you have shown how you got the IRR, okay? In this case, you also get the full marks since you've shown how you got the IRR. Clear? Okay, great. <clears throat> That's all the other four you meant to have done in that particular okay, example. Okay, now let's try another question. Okay, you can get another question. Let's ask us to get NPV. Uh, these are free marks, by the way, most of the time. Uh, but let's come with you doing more, more, a lot of practice. Okay, um, NPV. This is always a question. There's no trick. Okay, no uh, working outside of the like this one. You can do this. I don't know. I hope we've not done this. I don't know. Have you done CS company? The question on the screen, CS company. Or SC, sorry. I don't know whether you've done it. I don't think so. Okay, if you've not done it, then go through it, then discuss together. We do part A, NPV, part B, IRR. Okay, let's mix work. Yes, okay, so go through it, then discuss together. If you have not done it,
Excuse me, sir. Yes. It's okay, I got it. Sorry? It's okay, I got it. Okay, okay, okay. okay Thank okay. you. Welcome. Okay, so let me suppose that you have gone to the question, okay, all of you, and uh, you have a suitable examiner required from this, okay. Uh, for the students, okay? Uh, so you meant to get the NPV and get the error. 15 marks, it is a lot of marks for sure. <clears throat> anyway, let's do that for, let's present it, uh, make the presentation in Excel. Oh yeah, we should present it. Let me get my question bank, which I'm not sure where it is. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let's present this question in the Excel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me call these. <clears throat> this company was the name is SC, SC uh, company. Okay, give me a second, I get the question. Okay, here's how the question is <clears throat> the company is in page. page. Page seven, okay. Page seven, page seven, page seven, SC company. Yes, I have it. Thank you. Okay, so you may get MPV. So you know the production will be as follow that five, fifty three, seventy five, that six. Mm. Uh, selling price twenty, variable cost twelve. Inflation four percent, five percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think from there you can get the contribution. Yes, let's get the contribution. So here you can get the whole. You begin sorry. Contribution. Okay, contribution. Uh, we can call this here selling place. Or you can just go straight and get total contribution. Okay, we'll be equal to the selling price. You be two, this is year one. Let's call this year one, year two, year three, and year four. As I told you, I prefer to have my work going horizontally uh, because it makes it easy for you to make a reference to the sales. You'll be equal to the selling price is 20. There's uh, an inflation of 4%, therefore 1.04 to the power of one. Okay, we have the selling price for the first year. Then minus variable cost and the variable cost, you tell is equal to the variable cost is equal to what is variable cost? Twelve dollars. Okay. And there's an inflation of selling price of five percent, the one point zero five uh, to the power of one. Uh, therefore, the the contribution per unit. Okay. Therefore, to get the total contribution, you multiply the number of units. Therefore, what will happen? 
I'm sure it doesn't happen there. Okay, let's do okay yes, okay. Therefore, we multiply by the number of units, the number of units, okay, uh, is equal to in year one, we are selling that 5,000 units, therefore multiply by that 5,000 units, okay. Only do long formulas, okay, by the, like, like this I've done here, okay. Only do this long formulas if you're confident, you know how to use Excel very well. Otherwise, do selling price, okay, separate sell, variable cost, separate sell, then total contribution, separate sell. But in case you're confident in using Excel, then you can combine them. Okay, that's make your work a bit quicker. Okay, that's therefore uh, the contribution for year one, total contribution uh, for year one. Okay, where, let me just repeat my pen. <clears throat> where this is the selling price, there's the first part for selling price minus the variable cost. Multiply by, once you minus these two, of course, you get a contribution per unit. Okay, contribution. Okay, per unit. You multiply the number of units, therefore, a contribution per unit to multiply by the units. Okay, this is what I've just done. But in case you're not so sure, in case you're not confident, you would rather do sell by sell. What do you do? Okay, so the first sell here, you do the selling price. Let me just show you. So you do, you do here, selling price. It will be equal to the selling price is 120 times one point. 1.04 to the power of one. Okay, we're gonna for the selling price for year one. Mm, what does happen? It's not. Okay, okay, we're gonna for selling price for year one. Variable cost. Okay, VC. You can do that. No problem. The examiner knows what you want to mean by that. Multiply by 1.05 uh, to the power of one. Therefore, you get the contribution, okay, per unit. I can just use that way, okay, contribution per unit, therefore be equal to the selling price minus, <clears throat> minus variable cost, 8.2. The therefore, total contribution, total contribution will be equal to the contribution per unit, multiply by the number of units, that 5,000 units, okay, and you get 27, which already have it here, 287, okay. So what are you confident with in case you choose that, okay? Uh, if you're confident using the way I've done up there, then do that, okay? <clears throat> okay, so that's on therefore contribution uh, for year one. Contribution for year one. I have the formula here, so I can drag it across all the four years, okay? Therefore, in year, the units are however different. The units of sale are different. Year two, they're 53. So I simply adjust year 53. 53. Okay. I like to have mark my markings in thousands. So let me adjust a bit here. Yes, 53. Uh, then in year three, they are that 75. I adjust to 75. And then in year four, they are, yes, they are 36. Therefore, 36. Units clear. Okay, great. Okay, I got for the contribution after inflation uh, for each of the year. There's no fixed cost. Okay, mm -hmm. working capital uh, has been in the second last paragraph. Uh, the production selling pro increase working capital. Uh, which will be seven percent of the revenue. Okay, so working capital. Working capital is equal to year one of the year four. It will be seven percent of the revenue. The seven percent of the revenue for the year, and the revenue for year one is equal to that five thousand units. One, two, three. Uh, we multiply by the selling price, and the selling price is equal to um, hmm, twenty times 1.04 to the power of one. Is that clear? Working capital is 7% of the revenue. All the revenue units, that 5,000 times selling price. What's the selling price? 20 times 1.04 to the power of one, because it is year one. Okay, and I'll get a four. What should be there for working capital for year one? Okay, it's the beginning of year one, because I think you do invest beginning of the year, not at the, yes, you start, invest at the start of each year. Okay, now the formula, I can drag it across for the entire, okay, four years. Okay, however, 
the units are different. So here I adjust the units, okay, to 53, 53, 53, 53. And that's the units for year two, for year three, which the units are 75, 75, okay. In year four, they are that six. If I adjust from that five to that six, okay, that's what they're for, the working capital. But we say that working capital, be really careful because what matters is the incremental, okay? Okay, incremental, incremental working capital. For year zero, look at here, let me just define by year zero. Year zero, year one, year two, year three, year four. Okay, sorry, year four, okay? Sir, could you please show your scalar then? Sorry? For the working capital? Could you please show your formula again for the working capital? Oh, okay, for the working capital. Okay, there is my formula for for year one. There it is. Ten percent of the sell, the sell revenue that five thousand units times twenty times one point zero four to the power of one. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Don't forget, just, just, just to make a mention, if you do put one manually here, then of course you have to adjust, let me just show. Okay, here, anyway, the power of one, one I use the cell. So it goes B1, okay, which is here, it goes C2, you can see it goes to, so let's say it goes C1, okay, you can see it here, goes to D1. If you would put here one manually, one manually, then of course you have to adjust here to two manually, and here three manually. So you have to be quite careful, okay. Uh, when it comes to the formulas we've been put there, okay. Okay, so that's on the increment on the working capital. So increment working capital, don't forget, you invest out of the year. So therefore, for year zero, okay, which is here, year zero, it will be equal to the 50,960. For year one, it will be the increment of the increase, okay, which will be equal to, therefore, it will be equal to 80,000 80, minus what you had beginning of the year, which is 50,960, okay? Therefore, you have there to be 924. You have the formula. You can drag it across for the entire four years. Clear. So that means, therefore, in year zero, you invest 59.60. In year one, you invest 29 to 94. Year three, you invest extra, which is that 10,000. Year uh, three, you are recovering because it's a reduction from 118 to 58. Year four, you recover the entire working capital, which is 58,960. Therefore, there's, a cash, there's an outflow, 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 an inflow, and an inflow. Clear. So, okay, what I can do here, let me change this to that. The, uh, could you please? So, in year zero, you're paying. So, therefore, this is a cash outflow. In year one, you're paying. So, therefore, this should be a negative. Okay, let me put it as a negative so that. It makes sense, okay? So here is a negative because it's your pain. It's a money out of the business, okay? So it's a cash outflow, okay? So for the others, they are, therefore, inflow. This is going to be an outflow, an inflow, and an inflow. Because here in year three, at the beginning of year three, you had 118. At the end of year three, you only need 58. They hold you to the extra working capital. You recover working capital. Therefore, you have a cash inflow of 59. At the end of year three, you have a total of 58,000. But at the end of year four, you don't need any working capital. You recover the entire working capital. Therefore, you get a cash inflow of 58. Clear? Is it clear? Okay. Okay, we have to, that's clear. So with the working capital, be quite careful. With the working capital, you have to be very careful. Okay, so you're done with working capital. Then do you claim allowances? Yes, you do. And you do so on a straight line basis. Okay, you do so on a straight line basis. So you can claim number please. Therefore, you can call this capital allowances. So 
balances, therefore will be equal to four per year. Okay, and this will be equal to the cost of the asset, and the cost of this asset is one million. Okay, one million one, two three. Yes, that's okay. So one million. You divide by the number of years, which are four years. You divide by the number of years, which is given to fifty. Therefore, the tax saving. Therefore, okay, the tax savings per year will be equal to the allowance. Okay, times the tax rate, which is thirty percent, I guess. Is that percent thirty percent for a tax saving of seventy five thousand per year for the next four years? But don't forget the the in arrears. We mean therefore uh, are they in arrears? Yes, no, it is on the year, so they're not in arrears. The tax per year is in the year in which the profit occurs, so therefore they're not in arrears. So therefore, uh, this is year the year savings. Okay, scrap value will be zero. Okay. Cost of capital, 12%. Uh, and with that, uh, okay. Therefore, let's say this is a solution, therefore, okay, it would be equal to year zero, year zero, year one, year two, year three, year four. We don't need year five, because the tax is paid in the same year. Then you can have here contribution. Okay, so you can make for reference to my workings already up there. You can drag across for the entire four years now. Okay, don't forget, I said that you can only be able to drag the formula in case the workings were going horizontally, not vertical, not going downwards, but going across. Okay, that's for the, uh, the contribution. There's no fixed cost, and you pay tax. Okay, so go straight to tax then. Would you be equal to, therefore, 30% of the profit of the contribution above there? But don't forget this cash outflow. Therefore, I begin my formula with a negative. Okay, therefore, we've got the tax for year one. You can do so for the entire four years. However, I have tax savings. Therefore, add the tax savings to be equal to, okay, I'll be equal to 25,000 per year. Okay, uh -huh. 25,000 per year. Let me just lock that cell. You don't need to do this, but I prefer to do this. Okay, saving per year. Therefore, that's why I have the formula. I draw across four years. Then you have working capital, the increment working capital, which is equal to, yeah, we begin from year zero. We have done that already. So I have the formula here that comes working capital for year zero. I can drag across for the entire four years. Therefore, the working capital for each of the year. I hope yes, no scrap value, and that is it. No initial cost. Okay, I can call this initial cost. Okay, initial capital cost. Initial cost, we are paying one million. Negative, one million. Yes, and how we are cash flow there for? For the entire five, four years. Sum of cash flows. Okay, I can begin from contribution going downward all the way to the initial cost. That's for year zero. Then I can have the formula across the entire uh, five years, four years, sorry, four years. Because of the cash flow for year one, for year two, for year three, for year four, uh, yes, for the entire, those four, entire five years. Clear? Excuse me, I have a question. Mm. I was doing it as well. And would you just repeat the incremental work in capital a bit because I I didn't get too clearly why fifty nine sixty is in near zero. Okay. And where the final fifty eight is coming from. Okay. So in the second last paragraph, you know, production and selling of uh, producing and selling product P will call for increase in investment in working capital. Analysis of historical levels of working capital within the CS company indicate that at the start of each year, at the start of each year. So you invest towards working capital, the start of the year. The working capital required for year one is 15 and 60, is it? Yes, yes. But when do you invest it? The start yes, of year yes. one, in which is year zero, is it? You invest therefore in year zero, is it? Uh, yes, yes. Which is therefore 15, 9, 60, is it? Yes. Okay. Now, don't forget working capital is at, we are topping up, okay? At the end of year one, we require 50, 80, now 80 to 54. They have how much they have to do need to add 29 to 94. Clear there? Yes. 
at the end of year two, you require 118. Okay, already have 80. The how much you drop up? That seven. Clear there. At the end of year three, you need 58, but already you have 118. What is the extra working capital? Disposed of, isn't it? Yeah. And get a cash inflow, 59, 114. Clear. Yes, yes. At the end of year four, what do you need? How much, how much working capital do you need? Zero. Because the inverse when you come to an end in year four, isn't it? Yeah. Therefore, what do you do, what do, you do, what do, you do with the working capital? You dispose your entire working capital, isn't it? Which is yes. 58, 960. Clear. So yes, if it was, if they said it was going to be replaced, yes, would have don't, don't recover. Replaced. Yes, don't dispose it. Don't recover for working capital. Okay. Like the way I think it's really, I think in the big UK company, I don't know which company it was. There was no, there's a, a question where there was no, there was a replacement. Okay, therefore you don't recover working capital for that particular case. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so you have the cash flows, year one, year zero, all the way to year four. Therefore, NPV would be equal to equals NPV. The discount rate is 12%, therefore 0 0.12. Define the cash flows from year one. Okay, take note of that. If you want to use this formula, you define the cash flow from year one, year one, year two, year three, year four. Then you subtract in this example add, okay, because there's already a minus, okay. Therefore, subtract 1050, 960. Therefore, therefore will give us the NPV of the investment, which is 90,645. Clear. Okay, that's part A. Should we invest the project? Of course, should invest the project, okay? The company should invest the project since the NPV is positive, 960, 90,645. The company, okay, that is part C, being asked to advise, okay? And the company should invest in the project okay, since it has a positive NPV. of 9645 yes 964 that's okay clear okay good uh, just just mm. uh, highlight that formula for npv again there's a formula for the npv Plus okay, thank you. Okay. Does it get MPV? Part B, yes, yes. I still didn't understand working capital. Sorry, you don't understand working capital? Yeah. Okay. Sanya, can you explain that? Can you explain working capital? Um. Well, you just look at the it's similar to what we've been doing in the other questions. Maybe you can go through that and then see how he's done the same thing. It's literally the same thing though. Okay, let me, I'm gonna try to help out. I hope it will be okay. Now, you've been told that you invest first, you invest the start of the year, not end of the year, the start of the year, okay? I would imply the form, the 5960 is what is required start of year one, which is year zero, okay? Uh, 80 to 54, okay, is the working capital required at the end of year one. Don't forget, this is working capital, okay? The best way to explain this, look at it as stock, okay? At the, eight, at the beginning of the year, the stock you had was 59.60. At the end of the year, the stock you have is 80. Therefore, it means you did invest money, okay, to increase your stock from 50 to, to 80. There was the, therefore, what's the extra amount you spent towards the purchase of stock? It is therefore 29 to 94. In year two, the total amount of working, working capital required is 118, 110, okay? So already by the beginning of the year, you had 80 already. If we top up, by how much? That's seven, 856, okay? End of year three, you require 58, okay? But already you had stock worth 118. Therefore, what do the, what, what are the, the extra stock that you don't need? You dispose them off and you earn some money, which is equal to 59, 159, which is the decrease. At the end of year four, this is the end of the investment period. Okay, this is the end of the investment period. 
Therefore, what do you do with the stock you have already? Go to the market, dispose them off. How much do you earn? Their value, their worth, which is 58960. Clear? That was like Sakina? Yes. Yes, thank it, you. It's clear. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, for working capital, you have to be very careful because there you can, you can make mistakes for sure. There yeah, you can make mistakes for sure. Okay, so you're done with NPV. That was part A, and you have advised the company. Then part B, you want to get IRR, okay? Use the IRR. You can use the formula that you have done, A plus B minus A, if you want. But why do you want to do that? And you're using Excel, okay? You'll be good to IRR, okay? Now for the IRR, okay, let me repeat. You define the cash flows from year zero. For the NPV, from year one, okay? So you have to be quite careful. Otherwise, you get it up with the wrong answers. And so therefore, for IRR, I define my cash flow from year zero, okay, all the way to a year, a year, five, year, year four. Don't forget, year zero cash flow must be a negative, okay? Like you see here, it is negative 1050. If it is a positive, you can't get IRR, okay? Therefore, the IRR is 16%. Let me increase decimal because I think it's the decimal. Then I get 15.69%. Clear, Daisy, it's clear. Daisy, we're clear. I guess this is this in class. I not in class. Okay. Uh, Nafisa, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. If it is clear, <clears throat> I think we can do one more question. Then I think that we, I think there'll be enough for us. Uh, I, have a, I have a question. Yes, yes, Brian. Um, how 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 is it that on your Excel? Yes, you bid the the initial cost negative, and it didn't affect your NPV calculation. It didn't affect my NPV calculation. Uh, do I get your answer? Or do I get your question clearly? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, then PV, I guess you will add instead of minusing because it's already a minus. Uh, oh, yes, that's, that's what I did. Yes, if you look at my formula here, I did add. Yes, so be careful. Yes, yeah, I did add. Yes, here it is. Uh, you can see it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there you have to be quite careful. Yes, you, in this time, you can be uh, adding because it's my, uh, if you have to subtract, it becomes a plus. So be careful. Yes. That's why okay. I need to put a plus here. Uh. Okay, great. So that's on how to get the NPV, how to get the IRR. On this one, IRR, you advise the company. The company should invest in the project since it has, since the IRR, since the IRR, uh, which is 15, 15.69, 15.69% is greater. Is greater than the cost of capital than the cost of capital. Twelve percent. But we need to justify not just invest, but why do you invest? See the error. Fifteen point six nine percent is greater than cost of capital. Twelve percent. Clear. Sakina is clear. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's I think we can do another question uh, so that in the afternoon we do something different. That was not question. This is a question that has both NPV and IRR. And don't forget, this will be an idea that will be there, will be there in the exam. So expect your examiner to test you on this area. So this is an idea that the examiner will, uh, will test you. So uh, be prepared to answer to be prepared to answer such question on how to get the MPV, how to get the IRR, uh, some time payback, some time return on capital employed. But most time there be question regarding MPV and IRR. Hmm, this one MPV. I want a question that has both of them so that we can be able to attempt. <clears throat> Uh, there's no NPV there. Oh, there's no error. Mm, yeah. 
this one looks easy, I guess. Okay, this one I think is too easy. So let's we can get a complex one. There is no error here, just then PV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one we are done already. Mm -hmm. And we are here. Okay. Let me check. They do search. We can both get it quickly. Internal. I'm sure we have this rate of return. Mm -hmm. This one. CS. Yes, this one is just done right now. This one is okay. If it doesn't get okay, then you can do this one. Then dual company. This 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 one like we did. This one dual company. Yeah, okay, this one just done. Okay, there's no many questions regarding this area. Uh, if not, okay, let's do this one then. NPV, IRR, return account employed, payback period. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, this is switch question. PV company, PV company, uh, page 11, page 12. PV company, page 11, page 12. Okay, go through it, we discuss together. <clears throat> PV company.
Okay, I suppose you've gone to the question. So let's attempt to do it together. <clears throat> Okay, so let's call this PV company. Okay, so we need to get the NPV, so we need to get the cash flows. Uh, we told that the company will be selling the following units 60, 70, 120, 45. Selling price um, is 200 before inflation is 20. Variable cost is equal to eight. Uh, fixed cost one twenty. Okay. Inflation for selling price is three. Inflation for uh, variable cost is four. Okay. So then we can get the contribution. Yeah. Year one, year two, year three, year 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 three, and year four. Okay. Which will be equal to selling price is 20 with an inflation of uh, the same is inflation 3 percent 1.03 to the power of one to the power of one okay minus variable cost which is variable cost is equal to eight okay with an inflation of with the inflation for the cost three four percent okay 0 0.04 to the power of one also the power of one <clears throat> We multiply by the number of units, okay? So let me multiply half the brackets. And by the way, be very careful with the brackets because uh, they might end up getting you the wrong answers. Be very careful with the use of brackets. Okay, so that's called the contribution per unit. Okay, so I've done it in brackets, okay? Uh, we multiply the number of units, which is 60,000. 60, uh, one, two, three. For the, for, the, for the contribution I received in year one. Of the formula here, then I can drag it across for the entire four years. Okay. Okay. However, the number of units are different. Okay. Uh, in year one, there was 60, year 270. So I adjust here from 60 uh, to 70. Year three, I adjust from 6 to 120. Okay. Year four, I adjust from 60 to 45. Okay, that's good for the contribution for year one to year four. Then fixed cost. Okay, fixed cost. For year one, it'll be told to be equal to uh, the current fixed cost as it, per today is 170. Therefore, that will be a one. It will be increased by 4%. 70,000. That's 1.7. So, remove a zero. Okay. So by the end of year one, it will have increased, okay? Uh, so equals by the rate of increase in operating cost for 4%, 1.04 to the power of one. That was the fixed cost, therefore, for year one, I drag the formula for the entire four years. Okay, this fixed cost, no need for it, we didn't do any adjustment, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a fixed cost, what else remaining? Mm -hmm. Curriculum allowances. There's no tax. There's cap value. No term of value. Uh, yes, yes. Are we, are we, aren't we supposed to look for the incremental fixed cost? Yes, the entire assignment is incremental. So the entire business is one, so it's incremental. 
So the one twenty six is incremental, one eighty three is incremental, one eighty one is incremental, and so is one eighty eight is incremental. So the entire one twenty is incremental. So it's not like the case of working capital where you look at the increase, the increase. No, this is because you pay every year. So in year one you pay one twenty six, year two you pay one eighty three. Is that literally money you get out of the pocket the entire one eighty three? Oh. You get it? Yes. Well, this is a cost you're paying. It's like you're paying for, let's say, uh, your salaries to the workers. You don't tell that the last year I paid you as twenty six thousand. This year I don't pay you. I'll pay the extra. No, you pay every year. The cost you're paying to the workers is increased, for example, by four percent per year. So you pay every year. Okay. Is it clear? Unless you're doing, you have a case yes. here where you're comparing uh, the current machine with the new machine. Okay. Where the current machine, the cost was about twenty. Uh, so therefore, the, the cost for the new machine, the total cost you'll be incurring out of the new machine will, will only be the increase. The, unless that's the case, uh, then generally you take the entire fixed cost, okay, because you're paying for it. Okay, example, the salaries to the workers, you don't have that CI paid you. So this year will only be paying you the increase. No, you can't do that. You, you get it, Brian? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Could you please show me the formula? Sorry? Could you please show me the formula? Yeah, in the fixed, the fixed cost. Uh, for the fixed cost, okay, there you go. Okay, mm, what else do you have? And that is it. So, there is a question. Okay, you get an PV. So, why are you increasing? Why is it increasing by 1.04? Isn't that for the variable cost? No, no. We were told that expected operating cost inflation. Fixed cost is part of operating cost. Can you see that? Oh, okay. Fixed cost is part of the operating cost. You've been told that fixed operating cost. Can you see that term written there? Fixed operating cost. Variable operating cost. Then expected operating cost inflation. You can see that uh, as an officer. Okay, sir. Thank you. You can see it. You can see it. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I think we are done. That's a, that's a very good question then. Okay, fair enough. NPV, uh, year zero, year one, year two, year three, year four. Do when do you pay tax? Uh, this will be two weeks, no taxation. Wow, okay. Then contribution, there's no tax. There's no working contribution. Year one, I have it here. So I can drag my formula across the entire uh, four years. Then let's fix cost, okay, fix cost. This cash flow that would be a negative. So I begin by uh, with a negative. Okay, one twenty six thousand year one. one. Uh, the entire I uh, have the formula, drag it across the entire four years. Uh, then I can have let me call this cash flow then. Well, there's no tax you're paying. Some of these to get the cash flow. Okay, year one, all the way to year four. No working capital, uh, no scrap value no tax saving that is it npv <clears throat> sorry npv npv therefore will be equal to equals npv okay define the rate you discount at a rate of 10 percent point one okay then from here no initial cost i mean uh, i need to have initial cost here so let me just uh, so, uh, let me just move this we have this initial cost. Mm, initial cost should be called the cost of this investment is how much? Two million. Two million. Is there working capital? There's no working capital. There's no working capital. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> then some all the way from contribution to the initial cost. Okay, they made the same. So, anyway, so we get the NPV, therefore, NPV will be equal to equals NPV, the first rate, 10%, then from year one all the way to year four, then plus, look at here, I, I am using plus because uh, my initial cost is already negative, okay? Initial capital, and get that for that to be the NPV, okay? That's what we for the NPV. Next, you mean to get IRR, okay? IRR. F will be equal to equals IRR. I define from year zero, okay, from year zero, okay. Uh, year zero all the way to the final year. 18% for the IRR. Okay, if you want more decimal places, you can increase it to get 17.99%.
Next, we get the return on capital employed. Okay, return on capital employed. Uh, return. So return on capital employed will be equal to. Don't forget the is profit. Okay, using profit. Okay, uh, therefore it will be equal to uh, the cash flows I have above there. Okay, we we'll call them cash flows. Okay, I have here, here zero. Okay, I don't need year zero. Let me just include year zero. Uh, year one, year one, year two, year three, year four. Uh, cash flow. Let me just drop it here. Okay, will be equal to what we have here already. <clears throat> Draw across for the entire four years. However, don't forget you're using profit. Therefore, what do you do? You subtract the uh, depreciation, which you have not done here so far. Okay, when, when you are getting this cash flow, we didn't subtract depreciation. So here we need to this depreciation because it's accounting profit. Don't forget this loss of value of the asset depreciation. Okay, this could be okay. Let's just let's depreciation. There's uh, depreciation. Depreciation, which should be equal to the cost. Let's say is two million. The life is four years. So we assume that it's being depreciated over life of four years. Therefore, will be equal to depreciation will be equal to. I do the work in here. No problem. Two million. Yes, two million. We do have four years. <clears throat> Divide by four years, therefore it's half a million. So it's let me put it a negative. So every year there's a deposition of half a million. I drag across for the entire four years. Therefore, profit, we call this value profit. It'd be equal to sum, therefore. Here zero. I do that for the entire four years. So the therefore the profit to be earned by the company. Over those four years, don't forget we didn't we didn't subtract the depreciation. That's in this time only we are subtracting depreciation, accounting depreciation, and therefore we can get a sum sum of the profit. Mm. Okay, you can just get the average profit, average profit. Therefore, average profit. Therefore, would be equal to okay average of the profit you have earned year one or the two year four. That's kind of the average profit. We do have average investment. Okay, average investment. <clears throat> average investment would be equal to two million. Okay, mm, two million. One, two, three. One, two, three. We divide by two. Okay, to get the average profit. Therefore, return on capital employed. Therefore, could be equal to average profit divided by average investment. And we say this is a percent, okay? okay therefore, we got therefore percent. Let me create a percent. Okay, therefore, the return of capital paid of twenty five percent, okay? Lastly, we can do the payback period. <clears throat> payback period. Uh, payback. There is a discount payback period. This this discount has been discounted payback period. Okay, would be equal to uh, cash flow. We can begin here with year. Year zero, yeah, year, year one. Okay, let me just do the year zero. Um, I think cash flows here. So this is year zero, year one, year two, year three, year four. I have the year reading, so I can just copy. So copy and I paste. Okay, I paste the values and paste the values. Okay, don't forget you can you, you can right click. Okay, I hope you control C, control V. Okay, I hope you still remember those uh, shortcuts. Then how can I have your cumulative cash flow? Cumulative cash flows. Okay, will be equal to two million for year zero. For year one, will be equal to two million. Okay, plus what you have already earned. Okay, uh, two million, which is a balance board forward. Sorry, just put. Will be equal to uh, cumulative two million. Okay. Plus what you've earned, which is 560. Therefore, we get the, the remaining balance. So you could drag across for the entire four years. Therefore, by the end of uh, year three, you've already covered your entire money that you needed. Okay, uh, the six or seven. Okay, you have a payback. Therefore, payback. Therefore, payback period. Therefore, which is discounted. It will be equal to uh, 
two years is a few months will be equal to two years okay plus by the end of year two what you need is sign 44 okay that will be equal to minus sign 44 because that's what you need you divide by what you'll be earning in year three which is 1351 clear I give the payback period for this project any question Just uh, can you open that formula for payback again? Uh, payback. There it is. So two years, it is two years because by the end of year two, uh, by the end of year three, your recovered is already a positive. Therefore, the payback is between year two and year three. So we begin with two. However, don't forget the cash flow is negative. That's why I've started with the negative in my formula here. Because my cash flow is already negative, that's why I put it a negative there. Okay. Clear. Question. Okay, great. Then fair enough. We can meet at two fifteen. Uh, we proceed for the next the next area. Then okay. Then see you at two fifteen. Don't forget to sign in case you're not signed.